Hey guys, um, so today we're going to learn how to remove on-act mess on act messages uh, from RabbitMQ. So um, yeah, let, let's uh, let, let's um, jump right into it. So um, I'm going to go over this document that I wrote, but I'm also going to demo how to remove on-act messages from RabbitMQ. So um, let's uh, move right along here. All right. So the quick answer to remove on-act messages is to find the channel with the on-act message. Um, close that channel slash connection that has the on-act messages and call purge. So, um, so yeah, basically the, you know, you know, obviously the, that first step, you have to find the channel because if you don't know what channel, you know, you'd be, you have to know what you're going to close, but you have to know what you're going to fix before you actually fix it. Um, in the second part, so you're gonna close that. You're actually you, you need to close the channel, but you, um, as far as I can tell, every, every method I've seen, you you basically have to close the connection associated with that channel. So channels are like uh, put inside; they, they uh, exist within the connection. So they're like separate channels that they they're they're like connections within a connection. That's how I would think of it. Um, not gonna get um, any deeper into that that distinction today, but. Um, Basically, you're going to find the one with on act messages. That's pretty easy to do. So um, you, you're going to close it. Once it's closed, that those messages could be sent off to another. They could be consumed by nothing by something else. So that could be considered a fix. But we're assuming you want to actually remove them. So if your goal is to remove those messages that are on act rather than have them processed, you can then, then assuming they didn't get consumed by something else you can just call purge to actually delete all those messages so um let's see here let's ac actually demo this um before we actually show you how to fix it we're going to actually generate some on act messages because so right now we don't have any on act messages so i'm going to go right ahead and um actually create some i'm going to i have a broken script that uh I, I have a script that breaks things so um let, let's see here I'm going to jump over to this other workspace here and um so i have a few terminals up let's see did i did i start RabbitMQ? um yeah i'm, I'm pretty sure it's running right now I, anyways um th these are a little bit harder to see because of how they're zoomed in but i am going to open so i'm going to run the send script um and then i'm going to run this this receive script it's a receive broken script um all right so the receive script is receiving now i'm going to run the send script a few times <clears throat> now you can see in this window this middle window right here um let's just zoom in on this just so you can see i'm just calling this script called send and that just sends a message out um and then you can see over here um I have a consumer that's just receiving messages, but it's called receive underscore broken. So um, it's meant to cause a problem. So let's jump over here. And uh, in this terminal I have right here, let me actually just maximize this. And um, I'm zoomed in a bit more here so you can see it. Now this is the broken consumer. So um, what you'll notice is uh, basically what one what can cause on act messages and what does in this case is by not acknowledging a message so which i guess is kind of obvious so a consumer will consume a message and it never acknowledges it so that's that's where an on act message comes from it's a message that didn't receive an act so um an act um comes from there's two ways you could acknowledge a message you could either either set auto act to true in your basic consume so this is your basic consume uh function call and one of the parameters if, is auto -ack. now it's it's optional but if you set that parameter to true it's going to acknowledge every message as soon as it comes in and you'll never uh, run into the situation now if you don't set that to true you have to remember to acknowledge your message and in this case and you acknowledge it um, generally in your callback function, usually uh, within this callback function after it processes it and does whatever work it has to do, at the very end, you're going to call, um, you're, you're going to call another function to acknowledge it, and we didn't do that here. So uh, one thing that can happen is, uh, like, like for example, like if it gets stuck processing the message some point in your callback and doesn't make it to that point, 
or potentially if even you, you just forgot to put it in there, that can cause this problem. And that's what we have in this case where we just, um, we just admitted the line that, um, we, we just admitted that line from the callback. So that, that's what broke it. So that's, that's the broken script that we have. So, um, now we are going to show queues with ONAC connections. So we're going to do this from the command line. You can also do this from the GUI. Um, so this, this document I wrote on this, and you can check the link in the description for this document. But um, yeah, I have a bunch of uh, a bunch of screenshots showing how you do it from the from the GUI. But we're going to show you how to do it from the command line first. And also, we are uh, I, I have a little bit of extra. I have some info on like how, what causes the issue. Um, yeah, so like my callback function. This is basically the same uh, script that we looked at. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, at the end of your callback function, if you just say, if you s say a basic ACK and just acknowledge the message, that would fix this problem. In fact, this uh, broken, uh, um, yeah, this broken script was based on a working script where I just removed that line. But um, basic. So there's uh, another way you could fix that. As I had already mentioned this, you just set auto act to true. That's this variable that I have set here. Just set auto auto act to true, and that will uh, that will fix it. And I believe I actually to create this broken script, I copied a working script, and I believe I had actually set auto act to, to true in that script, and that's what I removed. I removed it, but I did not add a uh, basic act. So that that's basically what broke it. A anyways. Um, yeah, so let's uh, show you actually how to uh, how, how to do this. So you you would say uh, list queues. So let's let's give that a shot right now. So let me maximize this again, and there we go. So um, and you notice this command. Um, this is a RabbitMQ CTL command, and so the command is list queues. And after list queues, <clears throat> so list queues is like the sub command of, of RabbitMQ CTL, and it has a, it has three parameters that I use. So the first one is is name. So that's it's going to give you the name of the queue, which is kind of important. It'll tell you the messages, and then it'll tell you the unacknowledged messages. So these three parameters just specify which columns you want to see. So you're going to need to see those. You'd actually we could emit messages if we wanted. You know, so in anyways, in this case, we have a queue called hello. That's what um, our script created. And it has 17 messages. And all 17 of them are unacknowledged. So right here, unacknowledged messages. That's what you have right here. So there you go. So let's jump back over here. <coughs> so to show queues. All right. So to find the channel with the onic message. Um, did we even... All right, show queues with ONAC connections. Okay, so we, we could look at the connection like this. So you actually need the, the connection. So this will show the queues. Um, So th there you go. If you run this com com you, same command or a uh, different command, rather, rather than listing queues, we're listing channels and um, same, same thing. It's going to you, you specify the two columns you want to look at. First column is connection. Uh, second is unacknowledged messages. So this will show you a connection and the connection name looks like this. <clears throat> it has like a, a couple angle brackets and it has like a host name and uh, I guess this is probably like an ID number or whatever or a connection number. But this, what I have highlighted right there, that specifies the connection. And this other column here, 17, is the number of unacknowledged messages. So that gives you a step closer to fixing it. So you can close that connection. Now, um, I'm going to copy this command in here. But I'm going to edit it because, uh, and let's, I've never seen this, uh, you know, I'm going to zoom out. I've never seen this do this on uh, a Linux desktop. I've, I've only ever seen this happen on, 
I've only ever seen this happen using putty. Um, anyways. Uh, I, I see what's going going wrong. I, I think it just does not like those. All right. In, anyways, that doesn't matter. All right. Um, you can just paste it in like this. And this first parameter, so you use RabbitMQCTL, close connection. First parameter is going to be the connection. Next parameter is a message that uh, you're going to send to the consumer. So, um, you know, in this example, we say go away. Let's just send the message go away. And that, that message actually gets sent to the, it's not just some garbage message you put in there. It's a, it actually gets sent to the consumer. So when the dis consumer gets disconnected, it's going to display an error message. And that's going to be in the error message. I think it says something along the lines of, um, you, you know, we got this, this message. We were disconnected from the broker and this is the message they gave us or something along those lines. So anyways, so we'll, we'll take this connection that we received before and uh, copy and pasted it right in here and there we go closing connection to and it gives you the connection reason go away so um yeah you, you might want to change the text if um you know depending on where you are if you're using this in production or something you might want to give a in depending on you know what type of consumer is consuming this um you might want to give something more descriptive anyways um let's take a look at this this is kind of interesting so let me just maximize this so this is our consumer over here <clears throat> our broken consumer and you'll you will notice that um you know after receiving those messages and not acting them we closed it it gives us a uh, trace back and uh right here it says pika exceptions connection and the exact the exception is that the connection was closed by broker and you'll see uh uh, you know connection forced and then it gives you the actual message right here go away so um yeah there you go so that that's that's how the consumer fails when you close the connection um which which was pretty neat um and apparently some you know including those these like the the lesser than and greater than sign in there somehow caused some issue with me pasting that command in I, i've never seen that happen i usually only run into issues like that running putty on uh, Windows systems. Um, anyways, so let's run that same command again. So uh, list queues. So we can say paste. And you'll notice um, it's actually good to, to list both messages and unacknowledged because we, we can see the queue name. This is the same command we used before. We can see the number of messages is 17 and unacknowledged message is is zero. So that means we have uh, 17 messages and zero of them are unacknowledged. So they're all waiting there to be consumed. We only had that one consumer, so it, they weren't getting consumed by anything. Um, let's see here. So let's purge them. So we can ra run rabbitmq ctl purge q um, hello. So there we go, purging queue, hello, and vhost. So, um, oh yeah, and I gave you two commands. So we could run rabbitmq ctl or, or we could run rabbitmq admin. And I have another video that shows you how you install rabbitmq admin also. So, um, in, in the, you, you'll notice there's a, some subtle differences in the parameters. This one has an underscore between purge queue this one just says purge and then space Q. This one says name equals hello. This one is just hello. Hello being the Q name. So, you know, obviously if you have a different Q name, um, use that name instead of the word hello. So um, let's run the this command again and see how many messages we have. Now we see we have zero messages and zero unacknowledged messages. So there we go. We have successfully... Um, purged all of the unacknowledged or unact messages from this queue, which is um, which is great. Um, now let's do it again. Um, let's create the problem again and do this from the GUI. 
So um, let's start up this consumer again. And let's send a bunch of stuff to it. We can see it successfully receiving. All right, let's jump back over here. Now, rather than use the command line, let's use the GUI that we have up and running here. We're gonna move this GUI over here. So we're gonna have two browser windows open. Um, guest, guest. All right, so we're logged in. Um, and I'm gonna follow my own instructions. So, all right, this first one is telling us to head on over to Oops. Yeah, so I'm going to follow my own instructions here. So um, I'm going to go over to the channels tab. So it looks like this if you zoom out a little bit. I had zoomed the browser window in a bit. So you can go to channels, um, <clears throat> and you'll notice there's only one channel. Um, and you'll notice over here you see um, on act messages 10. So that's... Uh, over in this other workspace, you'll see I had sent 10 messages here or re and received 10 messages. So um, that's what you're seeing on act. All the messages are on act. So um, scroll on down. You want to go to the connections tab. So click over here for connections. And um, you'll notice uh, this is the connection. And you, you want to actually click on it to view it. So um, from here we are going to, so I, I believe we're just going to click on close connection. So scroll down here, close connection, force close. You say closed via management plugin or give it whatever reason you want. <clears throat> so I believe um, you'll notice, remember when we, uh, we killed that from the command line, we gave a parameter. I believe that's the same thing. So we're going to take a look at the, the consumer after we force close this. Um, so let, let's try force closing it right now. Are you sure? Um, yeah, why not? All right, there we go. So we close the connection for this consumer. Now let's jump over here. And you'll notice we have a, the same uh, error message. So, and reason is closed via management plugin. And in our last example from the command line, we had said go away as the message. This one says closed via management plugin. So it kind of it gives you a good indication of where it was closed from. And like I was saying, like if you did it from the command line, you might give a more descriptive message like, hey, I'm closing this manually from the command line to fix a problem or something like that. Um, you know, if you're doing this in production, you have other people working on it with you, they might want to know what's going on. Anyways, so um, from here, you can go to queues, um, queues right here. And we, we notice that the messages are in a ready state and not in an on act state. So previously, when we checked queues, they were in an on act state right here. Not now they're just in ready, so they could be consumed again. <clears throat> so um, if we want to purge those messages, we can click on this specific queue. So you click on the name of the queue right here, and it'll open up that specific queue. Um, and, and it gives you a bunch of stats about it and stuff. But basically, all you're doing is going down to the bottom to purge it. So you'll notice at the bottom here, we have a little purge button. Um, click the purge button, hit OK, and there we go, Q purge. So this is all pretty easy and self-explanatory. You just have to know the steps you're taking and search for the right things to click on in the GUI, and it'll, and that'll basically take care of it. So here you see, nothing is in the ready state because it's all been. Um, yeah, no, nothing's in the ready state because they've all been purged from the queue. The queue is basically empty right now. So that's what we want. All right, so um, yeah, so there we go. Um, we've successfully, uh, we have successfully removed on-act messages from uh, in uh, RabbitMQ. 
and and if you wanted to do the same thing in the GUI, you, like you could look up the same doc or follow along with me in the video and do it from the you know the from the web interface. All you need to know is that you need to do these things: find the channel with the onac messages, and you know close it, and then call purge. You can do that just by searching around in the the interface. You'll find them. Might take a little bit of extra time compared to actually, um, you know, just looking at the screenshots and seeing what to do. Um, that said, it's even faster to do it from the command line. Um, the GUI is nice and all, and it, it might be nice because it gives you a nice overview of things and you can click on things and it, it's kind of convenient, but it's also pretty fast to do it from the command line and you can automate it pretty nicely. So, um, you know, if you're doing a lot of things, we'll, we'll show you some examples in future videos of how you, um, automate certain things from the command line. So anyways, hopefully this answered any questions you had. Um, I think I already covered why I, I covered why this happens in a much in, in enough detail. Um, so that, that's about it. So hopefully you found this useful. Um, you might want to give us a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions, comments, criticisms, you know, leave a comment down below. We want to hear what you think. I try to get back to people with questions and stuff. Um, we're not getting flooded with too many comments yet. So, um, you know, any questions do le do leave a comment down below. Um, you're probably going to want to subscribe to this channel. Um, you know, if you want to make sure that you see a lot of great, con great new content in your queue, um, definitely subscribe because while we do have a lot more RabbitMQ stuff coming up, we have a lot of other great tech stuff too. Like we're, we're going to be going over, um, you know, just uh, any, anything related to servers, programming, uh, networking, single board computers, uh, 3D printers, electronics, soldering, basically just a ton of tech related stuff. We take things apart. Um, we, we take all sorts of things apart. Um, we have a lot of really interesting videos and you're, you're, you're not going to want to miss that stuff. You're also probably going to want to hit the little bell icon after you subscribe. So just hit the little bell icon so you get an alert whenever we come out with a new video, just so you don't miss anything. Um, and that, that, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just, um, hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully, you know, this saved someone some trouble and hopefully you enjoyed watching this. So as always, we'll see you. Yes. So we'll, we'll see you guys next time. At and uh, thanks for watching.